This is a Fortress Formicarium, uh, so from Tar Heel Ants. This colony inside is Camponotus pennsylvanicus. They are doing really well, and it's about time for them to move out. This this uh, Formicarium is about as full as you would want to make it for this genus. Um, they have a strong odor of formic acid inside their nests. Um, you can go into the wilderness, uh, the woods, and if you get too close to one of these colonies, you'll smell it. Uh, it's a very strong odor, so the odor can affect them as well. They use it as a defense mechanism, so you wouldn't want to get a colony into something this size um, and, and keep letting them grow until it, it's just very full. So um, we're about ready to move them out. You can see the queen here at the very top. This is that's where she spends about all of her time. Um, she must feel safer up there, and I've even seen her lay eggs upside down as well. Uh, and you can just see the various size of pupae and larvae in this uh, shot here. I think we're going to see a couple of the majors that have it closed here recently. Um, yeah, you can see one right there, kind of just off to the center. Um, there's another one coming up here. But um, the majors closed. It took a year and a half uh, to start to see those. Uh, that's typical from other people's experiences. There's a major coming into the screen right there. The the feature feature I wanted to show you in this shot here is the nest mate. It's open as a vent. It's not. We don't use it right now as water because the colony is getting so big that the humidity is high enough, and uh, so using it as ventilation is a great idea. Um, this is the back side, the foraging area. Workers right now are feeding on the remains of their fruit fly uh, meal for the day. And this group of workers. So this is this is what I mean by I, I can visually tell they're ready to move out. You never see ants hanging outside of their nest like this when they're not doing anything. Usually you see a sentry or two guarding the entrance. Usually they're inside. But here this group of workers, uh, they're more comfortable outside, which tells me that maybe it's too humid in there and they're coming out here to get into a drier situation. Uh, this here we moved on to a different species. This is Brachymermix patagonicus. And these are really, really tiny ants. Um, and you kind of see that here in a, in a second. But this is a Casita II formicarium. Um, they are uh, moved right into this and they have taken over the bottom level. And I've given them plenty of room to expand. They really grow fast. And here is their upper foraging area right now this is this is them feeding on fruit flies I basically just smashed some fruit flies on a feeding dish and uh, they dragged a couple of them into the nest but this is uh, great for these really tiny ants to be able to to pull on these small insects and these are the same fruit flies that they were just feeding on but now they're being um, attacked and killed by Formica subsericea ant workers so this colony is actually coming out of diapause. This is their nest below with the uh, one side. So all four sides are about that crowded. <clears throat> so what you're seeing here is just two to three workers are coming up and grabbing all the live fruit flies. And then they're, they're dabbing them. You know, they're not stinging them. It looks like they're stinging them. But they're dabbing them with some formic acid. Uh, that is to stun them and kill them basically. And then they'll take them down below, put them in the chamber and then come right back up and grab another one. Um, so the point of this video, the main point is to show you the different ways that fruit flies are, are taken by the different size ants, different species. And if you want to take away one thing from this video, it's, it's I just urge everybody to use fruit flies as part of their diet, if not the main part of their diet. Um, that's ants, all your ant colonies. Once I've started doing that, and instead of relying so much on crickets and mealworms, uh, and I still use crickets and mealworms, and you can use doobie roaches, uh, other feeding insects. Uh, and we're only talking about insects here. You still use all your other sugars and, and uh, fats and whatnot. I mean, you just want to use the fruit flies to give them the opportunity to get all the nutrients they can out of an insect. Um, they're very soft-bodied. Uh, these, these are flightless. 
Uh, these are wingless, so you don't have to worry about them flying around and getting out of your house. Um, another episode of Ant Desk, I think the first episode of Ant Desk, we talked about how to uh, feed fruit flies to your colonies. And this is a different species of ants. This is that same Campanotus pennsylvanicus colony. I took them out in the sun, so it's a very bright um, container right now. But what they're doing here is they're feeding on live fruit flies that I just fed them. This is very different. You saw the formica before were very methodical and quick to grab the fruit flies. Campanotas are not. These species, this species and the other one that I keep as well, they, it takes them two to three hours to kill all of these fruit flies that I feed them. And uh, they will leave them dead out until they're all dead and, to, and leave them dead carcasses out in the foraging area. And then later they'll start to pull them into the nest one by one and use them as food. Uh, so it's a def definitely a different approach. So, you know, the point I'm showing you here is you may see your ants doing this and think, oh, it's not working. They're not able to kill them. But it, they are. And it just takes longer for these ants to do it as opposed to others.